Hey, yo, yo. Check it. Welcome back, hero. My word is my sword, Hokage and Batosai Pulling the blades out of the forge, yo Prior to my knowledge of the force Was thinking Jedi, but through obtaining holocrons From both sides, I'm under gray skies Everything that glitter ain't kyber crystal My mind will lift you, and it's time we shine together Disarm your pistol, yo Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast My word play, my sword play When blades clash, Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast My word play, my sword play When blades clash, Welcome to the sword cast, sword my word play, my sword play when blades clash. Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast. My word play, my sword play when blades clash. version of the beat but whatever is it yeah there's no drums at the end i don't know what happened <laughs> <laughs> let's go start. welcome to the sword cat <laughs> <Started. laughs> right wrong version of the sword cast intro <laughs> <laughs> you already know what it is Hey, that sounds like a proper entrance theme for 2021. Yeah, man. Already, huh? All right, let's go. Um, s- capital storming puns. <laughs> uh, I'll start off. Hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> Boing. <laughs> uh, I got one. M- mask not on. <laughs> Give me liberty or give me death. Okay, cool. <laughs> give me liberty or give me COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, niggas is wildin'. Coo, the color of mayonnaise. White! <laughs> White! <laughs> um, Bro, in my mind, I just see... I see the actor Kerry Kerry I can't remember his last name the guy who played uh, Shang Tsung in the original Mortal Kombat <laughs> I just see him as the your soul is mine white white yeah. <laughs> blue <laughs> black <laughs> black hey, amen or nah it would be more like he's uh, Luke, Luke Kang's cousin would be calling out the name of a generic white guy <laughs> Frank <laughs> Keith <laughs> Funny oh. Welcome back to the Swordcast And uh Since we've last been on the air The whole wild. country is Turned inside out man Yes it has Um uh yeah man it's been a somewhat rocky start to the new trip around All right around the sun around the sun uh so yeah i don't, i think i don't even know what is this episode 65 or 66 i don't know 65 is what you sent me so <laughs> we'll go with that put me on uh you kind of threw me under the bus there Oh, whoops. I don't Sorry. know. You said it was this one. So. Right, nigga. If it's wrong, it's your it's fault, fault goddammit. So I don't matter. know. Okay. Well, okay. that's okay. Um, yeah, bro. Episode 65. We can't talk about athletes because we're on O lineman numbers right now. Um, I feel like Taylor Decker or some, some overrated Detroit uh, <laughs> offensive lineman is number 65, but. Yo, I think this is episode 66. Actually, no. I joined. No, I don't know. All right, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you into currently, my friend? As we enter the new trip around the sun, sir. Yeah, I've been. Uh, I've been into Cobra Kai, dog. Uh, <laughs> I finally listened because everybody's been talking about it basically uh, nonstop. I'm sorry, Daniel. 
After he sweeps the leg. All right. Hurts him. Um, Sweet and you know, leg. it's it's good. It's uh, it, it's I've how I've so I I saw like uh, I watched the first like I think like five episodes or so. I liked it. I mean, it, it's the right kind of corny. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, but I haven't seen the entire thing. I saw like a few episodes. Yeah, I'm not finished yet either. I'm about halfway through the third season. It's it's good. It's mad corny. It's one of these things where it's like it. It you have to understand that it's not taking itself that seriously, and right. once you do that, it's like all right, cool, because it's mad corny, but also there are really interesting and complicated narratives going on yeah. that are like, oh, okay, a lot of like teen drama, but also on the other hand, it's like, you know, super like Fox Kids <laughs> corny level a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, they they kind of like turned Daniel into like a villain, right? Yeah, he is. I, I love when he's doing his car commercial and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, right." We're gonna <laughs> fucking kick down the competition. <laughs> um, Hilarious. Yeah, so there's some there's some stuff there. There's some like, is Daniel the villain the whole time mm-hmm. type shit going on? Um, I haven't finished it yet. I'm sure. You know, there'll there'll be more there. There'll be more to it, but uh, whatever the case, it's it's been and the fights are actually pretty good. Yeah, like there's a there's a good quality uh, scrapping, which always bodes well. Facts. What about you? What have you been into? Uh, man. So other than wrestling, I'm gonna talk about that. But I've been into like really was going hard at trying to platinum badge um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Miles Morales and it was because in order to platinum that game which usually it's already hard enough to platinum games right but to platinum this you had to um to platinum Miles Morales you actually had to beat you had to beat it on new game plus you know what i mean so mm-hmm. you had to beat it again for a second time and I was just, uh, it took me a while to do it, but I did it. And now I have my second platinum badge ever under my bill. So now I have a platinum badge for my two favorite games from last year. It goes to Shima and Miles Morales. That's fire. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I've got everything except for beating it a second time. So Word. once I do that, I will have the platinum. But I have been playing it again recently just because I'm sort of, I need to take a break from cyberpunk because uh, I've put like a 130 hours into that motherfucker <laughs> type shit. God damn it. No. Yeah. But again, I mean, we've talked a lot about uh, <laughs> cyberpunk and I've been lucky to have a good experience with this. So I'm not tripping. Word um, but otherwise, it's really been it, man. Had a, had a long holiday uh, and back at work which is weird right um and i don't know if i like that shit i kind of like doing nothing right it's, like holidays yeah. 365 days a year yeah that'd be really cool but then again i do like my job so i'm not i'm not i have to be mature also oh by the way i also started my new dietary change okay or i don't eat nothing but leaves and fucking rabbit food Gotcha. Uh, so basically, <laughs> fuck you guys. <laughs> hey man, I'm rooting for you, bro. And I, no, I am. I no, am. <laughs> not gonna be able to. Do, not, go, not gonna be able to. Do. Oh man, I'm rooting for you, bro. And I think you can't do it. Yeah, it'll be fine. Whatever. Positivity, support. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey man, but uh, yeah, bro. The, the the healthy eating is definitely um it's a journey and it can be a challenge but what i always tell people is once you uh once it becomes your lifestyle it's not it's like no more it's not a challenge anymore yeah. you know what i mean like once you once your body gets used to it you even even your your cravings will will change you know what i'm saying yeah like it, it it it's it takes time, but it, it's it definitely happens. You know what I mean. So I think you'll be all right, bro. Hope you're right. <laughs> Support positivity. All right, man. Let's get it. Let's look, man. Let's go. All right. <laughs>
Yeah. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. Where my where my wrestling fans at, man? All Go right. for it. Let's get into this this wrestling recap. Look, beginning of the year, every year, January fourth, we got the. I just my mic just shorted off. Hey, Cloud. Yo, all right. <laughs> but beginning of the year, January fourth, Tokyo Dome. Wrestle Kingdom, always the first wrestling show of the year. The biggest, in my opinion, the best. Like, every year at the end of the year, uh, the best matches that happen at, at Wrestle Kingdom usually are right there at the top of the match of the year list at the end mm-hmm. of the year. You know, every year it happens every year. Never fails. Um, so this year... Uh, Wrestle Kingdom again, man. It was two days again. You know what I'm saying? It was uh, January 4th and 5th. I stayed up till 3 in the morning both times, watched it live. Um, it was fire, bro. It was it was definitely fire. Um, Japan, you know, they, they're doing like, they're still, they're having fans at their shows. Uh, they just have to wear a mask. And they can't like cheer vocally, so they just have to clap, right? But it doesn't really take away too much from from the show. It's it's dope, um, but Wrestle Kingdom was good, man. Um, uh, some of the uh, obviously you had the the whole storyline. Uh, you know they're doing the double titles. You had the the story with Abushi and uh, Kota Bushi finally did it. He finally got the got the gold. He's finally the guy in New Japan. Um, and you know I thought that was really dope, man. I I think that New Japan is the best ever at long term storytelling mm. you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. they they in the way that they do it is they like the guy who should get his moment right they might not get it when you think or when you want but it always happens you know what I'm saying like and, and they make you wait for it but it's it happens though you know like mm-hmm. going back like Years. My, yeah, like one of my favorite Wrestle Kingdoms is like Wrestle Kingdom 9. Wrestle Kingdom 9 was the first. This was Wrestle Kingdom 15, by the way, that just happened. But Wrestle Kingdom 9 was the first one that I ever watched. Like, knew about it when it was about to happen. Watched it. This was in like 2015. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, Wrestle Kingdom 9, Tanahashi was the man. And he had been beefing with Okada for like a couple years by that time and Okada would always beat him for the title but he could never beat him at Wrestle Kingdom Mm -hmm. and then Wrestle Kingdom 9 was like the year when everybody was like all right Okada is the guy like Tanahashi's again oh like this is it like he's about to win he about to he's about to be the man for the years to come which we've seen and he has been right Mm -hmm. but Wrestle Kingdom 9 he loses again to Tanahashi Mm -hmm. and then he's just like crushed and he's like crying after the match is awesome and then the next year, Wrestle Kingdom 10 is when he beats Tanahashi and becomes and is the man, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing with, like, uh, Naito, bro. Like, we everybody wanted Naito to win. I was at Wrestle Kingdom 12. Ha! Uh, that was subtle flex. I was at Wrestle Kingdom 12 live. <laughs> hey, at well, Tokyo actually, Dome, uh... <laughs> in Japan. And I was there, bro, and everybody wanted Naito to win against Okada. And he lost, and it, it was, like, silent for a second because everybody was like, what? That's crazy. Like, what? You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, he doesn't win there. Then Wrestle Kingdom 13 comes, and you're like, well, this has got to be Naito's time, right? Nope, he's not even in the picture because Kenny had finally won the title. And then he defends against Tanahashi. But that was the time when everybody thought it would be Kenny and Ibushi in the mm-hmm. main event, right? But they do Kenny and Tanahashi instead. Tanahashi gets his last like moment on top before he's too old, which was dope. Uh, Kenny goes to AEW. Ibushi still doesn't win. Then the next year, we got Wrestle Kingdom 14, and then that's Naito's time, right? So they tell this story from Naito for like five years, and he finally, all this stuff comes together. It's a super complicated story. I'm going to get into it right now. But anyway, he gets the belts at Wrestle Kingdom 14, right? But then you're like, what about Ibushi? Like, what the <laughs> heck, man? So... Doug, and then it turns out that Ibushi, this dude wins G1 two years in a row. You think that this year he's going to be like the odd man now because he didn't win last year. He mm-hmm. wins G1 two years in a row, wins the titles at Wrestle Kingdom. It always happens. The guy always gets his. It just might take a while. So, I don't know. Wrestle Kingdom was fire. Uh, Dave Meltzer did his little ratings. It, he gave like five stars to um, Shingo and Jeff Cobb. That match was awesome. Gave five stars to Bushi and Naito from night one. That match was awesome. He gave five 
point two five. I hate that to Okada and Osprey, and then he gave five point two five to Bushi and Jay White on the next night. So mm-hmm. it's definitely a fire show. You guys should check it out. Uh, my favorite match was uh, Ibushi and Naito from night one, and then my s- second favorite match was probably Cobb and Shingo. That match was fire. Um, and then uh, the Jay White match and Ibushi match was good from a story storytelling standpoint. I thought it was amazing, but I just thought it was a little long. Um, uh, but yeah, man, Wrestle Kingdom was fire. You guys need to go out of your way to watch it, check it out. It was very good. And then, uh, then we had the A A W uh, show, the New Year's show, and uh, well, hold on real quick on the on the J uh, New Japan note. I read somewhere that there's going to be a U.S. TV deal. Have you yeah, heard anything about I that? I did, and they haven't announced. I actually think they're supposed to announce it today. Um, yeah, that's that's amazing. Uh, I wonder what it will be because I subscribe to New Japan World, so if there's like something that's going to happen where I don't have to pay that $10, that would be right pretty that's, cool I, I feel like that would really open a lot of people's eyes yeah so that would be dope i actually don't know if they announce it yet but yeah they're about to so new japan's definitely supposed to be getting um a tv deal where they're gonna announce uh a u.s tv deal so you guys will be able to like watch it now instead of uh instead of um you know having to stay up three in the morning and catch it but but yeah, man, Russell Kingdom was fire, um, bro. Then AEW has the New Year show, and then mm, we get mm. Kenny Omega versus Ray Phoenix in the main event for the AEW World Crazy. Title. Another match that Dave Meltzer gave five stars. F- fire, one of the best like regular TV non pay per view matches you'll ever see. I, yeah. I loved it; thought it was really good. Um, and then uh, NXT had their show. Uh, their New Year's Evil show. Uh, it was it was cool. Um, Kyle O'Reilly and Finn Balor was the main event for the title. Uh, they killed it again. They be beating the crap out of each other. Mm. And uh, <laughs> they had another good match. I didn't think it was as good as their one last year, but it was still really dope. So a lot of a lot of dope wrestling out in the first you know first week of the new year. So make sure y'all get caught up. Go out of your way. If there's two matches, I got to tell you, go out of your way to watch watch. Kenny Omega vs. Phoenix from AEW and make sure you watch I would actually say watch Shingo vs. Jeff Cobb because mm. that match was just you know it was like not the story just the just the the right. match like it was, it was big fellas getting down yeah dog but big, sweetly yeah big fellas moving like 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 little fellas yeah uh, the match was fire so yeah man a lot of, lot of dope wrestling <clears throat> man make sure y'all go check it out um and yeah get caught up that's what's up, man. Boom. Yeah, bro. So, uh, obviously, I want to talk about this, right? I want to talk about uh, MF Doom. Uh, just, you know, Doom passing. And really kind of uh, everybody knows that's my favorite rapper, right? But also just really kind of going in, like, a mysterious way that, like, is true to his, like, mm. mystique and his, his character. I hadn't you know? considered that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so... Obviously, I was hit pretty hard by this. Um, I got the I got a doom I got a doom mask tattoo on my hand. Um, but just um, obviously, we put it up you, to the to the camera. Boom! Fire. Um, but yeah, bro. Obviously, we me and you talked about this off air yesterday, right? Like we talked about uh, not just the music. Obviously, the music is a huge influence. Mm-hmm. I think he's the greatest like writer or rapper ever, right? But um, outside of the music, right? Like, just the way that Doom did business is what I really took in, right? Just just being able to, like, I talked to you about how um, seeing, he changed my whole definition of, like, success, you know what I mean? Like, when I first started making music, um, you know, I really thought it was, like, you had to be this super visible, like, public figure and and have all these followers and you know what i mean have like the sweet car and and all this stuff Mm -hmm. and 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 then it's like you see doom and it's like you know i find this guy he's got this he's got this cult his music is amazing he's got this like cult following and every time he does something it it sells out and you know what i mean and 
and he just he's not visible and he like wears a mask so he can like go wherever he wants and people won't bother yeah, him and you know what I'm saying and fire. like just seeing that made me be like oh like I can do that like mm-hmm. I can make you know dope music and have like what I would call like a middle class rap career right like mm-hmm. you don't have to work but you're doing music bro and, and it's possible and, and I got that from like watching him do it you know what I'm saying so yeah. shout out to Doom rest in peace to Doom man my favorite rapper of all time and I know that a lot of other you know people especially people that listen to the pod were, were Doom fans as well so shout out to Doom yeah man shout out to Doom um, you know he was legendary in the sense that, like you said, the enigma, the mystery, the character, right? Like, I, I think it's really dope to play, like, the idea of playing a character in in hip hop. Uh, like, Mad Lib did a lot of that. MF Doom did it probably better than anyone else, um, bringing some like mystery, some mystique, and some some uh, just like surrealness to the music and to the to the art. Um, that shit's super dope, man. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I really appreciate uh, that legacy that, Loom, that, that Doom left behind. Um, and it's something that, that I think that a lot of people are going to continue to explore and continue to be inspired by. So rest in peace, MF Doom, all caps. Yep. Um, so, yeah, bro, in some, in some video and some video game news. Ooh. The most immortal video game of all time. Can't kill it. It's on every system. It'll never die. Yeah. Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Remember we did it. We did the top five uh, things that everybody likes and that you don't. And Grand Theft Auto was on mine. Yeah. I mean, I I think I like Grand Theft Auto fine, but I know. But like, what are we doing, yeah. dog? I should oh, been let's, uh, drive a car into a bank and kill civilians with a machine gun and then murder sex workers and. <laughs> yes <laughs> That's what the game is <laughs> It's that Oh my goodness um, um, But I mean GTA 6 uh, Allegedly is gonna have a female protagonist Like what do you think about that And how <laughs> How bad could this possibly How bad could this go <laughs> See, wait, wait. I'm not even gonna say that because I don't want people to. I don't want people to misunderstand me. Right. The reason why I'm shaking my head and <laughs> frowning is because, like, it, it's the same reaction that I get, or it's the same feeling that I get when somebody asks, um, or when I when I found out that the new person playing Bat Batwoman is black. Right. And I'm just kind of like. <sighs> <laughs> like I want to root for you. I, no, I don't want to. I will root for you, sister. I want you to do well. Word. Like I'm gonna support. I'm I'm gonna flat out watch Batman or Batwoman now. I didn't mm-hmm. watch it before, but I'm gonna watch it now because I'm gonna support her. But it's it's like, man, I just I get I get tired sometimes, and I wonder what it feels like for the woman to be to just have to brace themselves for the shit storm that they're going to end uh, up getting. Right, bro. And for women, bro, it's not even, especially for black women, it's not just from men or not just from white people. It's also from men who are either black or white, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> Captain Marvel gets this a lot where we, it's, so here's what happens, right? Mm-hmm. We think we look at a movie like Captain Marvel and we criticize it and black, especially black men will be like, oh, well, it just did had too many plot holes or it had like whatever or fucking I didn't like it. And which is fine. (laughs) 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 But but we choose like we we do this thing where we hide our sexism behind uh, oh criticism my goodness, behind like the the, the, the veil critiques of, of the yeah, movie it's, it's so stupid it man. happens in star trek all the time cuz you know like they, they well, do no man it wasn't it was like plot holes in it right. no nah, bro it was a girl and so it, and here's the thing mad. though the difference is that even if there are plot holes the reason why we're zeroing in on it is because you didn't like the main character because mm-hmm. the main character was a woman because the main character was black and right. now I mean the Star Wars is a perfect I said Star Trek but Star Wars is actually a better example of how le- the original trilogy is like full of plot holes and, right. and like terrible writing and like doesn't age well right and but it's like corny and right and 
and it's classic. Like we love Star Wars, right. right? Like I love all of the Star Wars movies, but it's really easy for us to put a microscope up to Super Ray, right? Like mm-hmm. um, Mary Sue Ray, and be like, ah, oh, this doesn't add up because fucking <laughs> she's a woman, or like, no, not because she's a woman, because like she didn't have any training and blah blah blah, right? <laughs> and we ignore the fact that Luke Skywalker had basically no training. Ten minutes, bro. You know what I'm saying? And so this is what I mean. Where the Last of Us, another one. The game, even though I, I know you're Ghost of Tsushima guy, but like the game was was simply phenomenal. Like it was a it was a, a damn near a like in terms of the technical masterpiece, and mm-hmm. and like the game itself was just a work of art. Um, but it's easy for people to be like, ah, plot hole up. Oh, like I didn't like this person. It, sh- it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. Get the fuck out. I ain't no reason. Like you just as well didn't understand it. Right. So like all these directions that it all of these uh, critiques that we want to harp on. Right. It's we do a thing where and it's hard to it's hard to like call people out on that because you can't read their mind and be like, nope, I sense that you're racist. So Mm -hmm. fuck you. You just kind (laughs) of have to like let them get away with trolling this game uh, in a way that they wouldn't troll or they would be overly or less critical um if if the main character was a was a man or a white person a white man in particular so i say all this to say i'm sure this game is going to be fire and i'm excited especially if you can make if you can customize make him a make him a woman a woman of color i think that would be really dope mm-hmm. i just am prepared for the shit storm i'm just prepared right. for niggas to suddenly grand theft auto been getting perfect tens for like 10 years and all and why i'm just all of a sudden this is gonna right i'm gonna just wait for these niggas to be like ah Nah, this game sucks. Or like another great example was Tenet, right? Uh, yeah. With John David oh, Washington. Goodness, man. I like you know. There's some people who I respect. Shout out to Michelle Keisner, who I know doesn't listen to our podcast, but I but she's super <laughs> dope. Um, she didn't like the movie. She thought it was overly complicated. I get it. I th- I thought it was fantastic. But all of a sudden, like you know, y'all niggas love y'all some Christopher, Christopher Nolan. Nolan bro. You been getting oh, ninety nine, a hundred thousand percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Now all of a sudden, he got a nigga in his in his as his main character. Ah, no, nope. <laughs> this movie sucks. This movie sucks. Right? Like, oh, so now all of a sudden, Christopher Nolan lost his his talent. Like, no, nah, fuck that, bro. Nah, yeah. He put some. He put some. He put a. He put a nigga on there. All That's right, why I don't bro. like it. They just. I mean, I just think we have to do a better job of understanding the reality that we look at blackness and and uh, femininity uh, and like womanness, we look at that from a different lens than we do uh, whiteness or maleness. And this is another situation where that's going, I kind of got activated a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta, it kind of catches you mid sentence. Um, that this is going to be another situation where that happens, and and I just am prepared for us to over scrutinize this shit. Um, oh, I mean, ask man. any woman who's who's any any position of leadership, who's in any corporate environment. I mean, they got to be, and the same with black folks and black women. Like I always say in our group chat, like they get it the worst because they got to be, they have, they bear the burden of being a woman and black, right? right. And so you got to be perfect. You got to be on your super P's and Q's right. in order to, to to get by. You know what I'm saying? So this will be no different. Anyways, that's how I feel about that. A hundred percent, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to play it anyway, but just, uh, <laughs> but, but just I, I definitely 100% agree with what you're saying man it, it's gonna randomly it's gonna be GTA's like first negative thing because y'all hate women and that's yep. why um, but yeah bro another nerd nerddom news kinda mm. Deadpool 3 is uh, Kevin Feige mm-hmm. has pretty much put it out there that Deadpool 3 is happening not only is it happening it's going to be in the MCU. Not only is it going to be in the MCU, it's going to be rated R. How do you feel about that? Okay. Um, how do I feel about that? I feel like my microphone is too loud. So oh, me, I don't I don't know. Deal with that first. Okay. Um, um, first of all, uh the Deadpool movies in general, right? Like I love the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm a huge Deadpool stan and I never thought it would be. I never thought they would make a Deadpool movie. Yeah, and I remember uh, one year at Comic Con. Right, I had a. F- I used to have this. I had this homie named Damien, and he would go to San Diego Comic Con, and he would always like 
send me all the exclusive stuff that was happening down there and take pictures and videos and send them to me. And I remember when they had basically leaked this like test footage of a Deadpool movie. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then what it was was the scene at the beginning where he drops into the car and he mm-hmm. beats the guys up in the truck and it's like that crazy chaotic scene in the truck. Mm-hmm. Um, and he sent that to me like uh, he, two years I think before the movie came out at San Diego Comic Con and I said bro what? Yeah. And he's like bro they're doing this. He's like and Ryan Reynolds is going to play Deadpool. And I was like no way <laughs> and then the movie came out and I went to see it and I loved it I thought it was awesome the first yeah. one I thought Ajax was a really dope pick for a villain if mm-hmm. you read Deadpool comics like you know that's a, a super solid choice and then also bro like I loved uh, I didn't know how they would do with like the humor in it. and it was like perfect it was yeah. funny the fights were sweet everything and then uh, I told you before <laughs> that's the first and only movie I've ever watched two times <laughs> in a row like right. I watched it and literally went right back and watched it again. And um <laughs> the dude sat next to somebody on the the second time and he's like, Man, I'm excited, I've been waiting for Deadpool to come out forever. And I was like, Bro, it's so good and he was like like what? I was, <laughs> like, I was like, I literally just watched it like an hour ago. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I loved the first one. Um and just um the second one I liked it. I thought they like kinda overdid the uh that's kind of the thing with Deadpool now. I think they like overdid the silliness a little bit in the second mm-hmm. one. I still thought it was sweet, but a little too much. Uh, hey, I'm gonna cut off my arm so I can escape. Right? <laughs> you know like, what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. Man. I thought they overdid that, but but what do you what do you think about this? Yeah, it's dope. I'm excited. I, I didn't think that I didn't think that Marvel was gonna be able to do that. I thought Marvel was gonna chicken out. Um, or sorry, I thought Disney was gonna chicken out. So I'm I'm happy to see that they're gonna fuck around and actually do this shit for real. That's exciting. Um So what follows logically is that the X Men are next, right? That was you see you mentioned that that's what they were Yeah. What they were teasing. And obviously like I am probably the biggest X Men fan ever, right? Like that's that's my comic book like home base. So I'm super excited about that. X-Men, Detroit Pistons, Star Trek. You're the biggest fan of all three of those things <laughs> that I've ever met. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. Um, so, yeah, those things, that's, that's, that's my wheelhouse. So, obviously, I'm excited about it. Here's a hero hot take for y'all niggas, bro. Yoga, fire, Heroes yoga, yoga, fire. Hot take. Minute, minute. <laughs> While I am excited and hopeful for the MCU to do a good job with the X-Men, I think it's going to be harder than most than people think. I think it's going to be more difficult than people think it will. Like, I think people are all like uh, Marvel. MC, the MCU has gained so much fan like goodwill that right. I think most of us think that all we need to do is just sign away. Uh, the characters um, and just get a good writing team behind it and it'll be all set right it'll be cool I think that's mostly true I think that in general that's true however the one thing that I need y'all to remember is that the X-Men in terms of tone is not happy-go-lucky it's not this it's not like Robert Downey Jr. It's not Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not Deadpool. It's not Robert Downey Jr.'s version of Iron Man with the it's quips dark, and the man. talk shit. It's woke. It's, it's woke. It's dark. It's political. It's, it's political. It's, it's it's problematic. Bro, it's it's by definition <laughs> political, bro. Yeah, for sure. It's like you said, racist. It's you know mutinous, right? It's about mm-hmm. strife. It's about injustice. It's about like discrimination. And maybe, maybe. If, if Marvel is smart and they are if Disney is smart and you can't deny that they haven't been thus far they will use the social political climate as like the undertone for that which would make it feel more at home but this whole like hey make it fun and like you know with the DCEU I, I hated Shazam and I didn't really like Wonder Woman that much the, well I liked the first one the second one I didn't like that much because they they kind of just like they just folded and was like, "All right, what's working for Disney? Fun, happy, funny. Yeah, let's make like, it like that." No, I feel you. I really hope they don't do that. And um, I, I, my worry is that they will. And and it's okay for like I think when you got the young kids, right? Like Jubilee, the like yeah. Generation X. Um, 
you know, the X Mansion, uh, like the the Stepford Cuckoos, like there's room for comedy there. But when you got folks like Wolverine, Professor X, Cyclops, Magneto, there's a lot of pain yeah. and like trauma that informs that character. Right. And we need to not shortchange that. And I even think, to be honest, like I know superhero movies didn't really hit their stride until later, but I thought that the first two X-Men movies did a fantastic job think, with that. I think that's kind of the consensus with those movies. Right? Yeah. I think people do kind of accept the first two. You yeah, know what I mean? So week, but. Yeah, I mean, I don't like them, but I think that uh, I know a lot of people who kind of accept the first two movies. Um, they don't, I think, do, do you, would you say, did you not like them when they first came out? I loved them. I was a kid. I, right. I was like, I thought it was awesome that they were making uh, X Men movies. I was like, they don't age well. That's for sure. Yeah, I don't think I saw them watch them again as an adult, and I thought they were terrible. But when yeah. I was a kid, I liked it. You know what I'm saying? I was just excited that they were making uh, X Men movies. Um, yeah. Um, but, so with that, so the the take is, let's be careful with the X Men here, and don't like if we just throw them in the MCU and just paint. The Guardians of the Galaxy, Chris Chris Pratt, right? Paintbrush on them and make Cyclops a fucking jokester and <laughs> you know whatever. Like, no nah, man, Cyclops is a is a dick. He's, he's a, a cop. Jerk. He's a jerk. Yeah, he's a he's, fucking he's, asshole. He's, he's the feds, right? You know, Wolverine is a is like I'm a a, a lone wolf. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, Gambit is a is sort of an untrustworthy son of a bitch kind of. <laughs> <laughs> that you don't really know like he's cool every now and then but you don't really know right. it, what he Rogue in a many way like these were villains for us Rogue Gambit were villains you know what I'm saying right. Wolverine even in, was introduced into the MCU as a villain or into the Marvel comics right. as a villain yeah. so like we, let's be careful here and let's understand that these are nuanced characters that's the thing I like that's the reason why I like the X-Men is because they're not a static team like people come in and out and people have different phases of their career where they're Oh, who got baptized? <laughs> Giannis. Oh, Giannis got baptized. Yeah. By whom? Aaron Gordon. Ooh. <laughs> All right, this we must interrupt this. <laughs> uh, we interrupt this broadcast to bring you Giannis getting dunked on by. I wonder if it's already. On I don't. Th- it can't possibly be. Yes. Is it already on One YouTube? One hour. How is ago. that even possible? How's that Mark, possible? Two man game. Gordon penetrating. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Over the top. Of the combo. <laughs> God damn. Yo. Second charge. Offensively, and he threw down our Honda play of the game. Over the top. <laughs> <laughs> combo. Right That's here, what he David. gets for Giannis being seven foot tall and trying oh, to take a charge. Oh my man. God. It would have been a six foul. Goodness gracious. That's what, yeah, for, that's what he get for. That's what he get for. like it. That's what he get for trying to take a charge, and he's like eight feet tall. That's funny. All right, well there we go. Um, so that's that's my take, I guess. Boom. Aaron, Jor- Aaron Gordon just dunked on Giannis and the X Men. You got to be careful with him. <laughs> Boom. Um, I feel you. And how about um, I I, I kind of want the the MCU to. It's okay to have movies that are made by the with that quality and by the MCU team right but it doesn't have to be like an overarching movie you know what I mean oh, like, sure, sure, I'm sure. perfectly fine with Deadpool being part of the MCU but not necessarily like having plot points that have to do with mm-hmm. a bigger plot involving the Avengers and you know what I mean? Like but you already know they're gonna do that. I already bro. know they are. Of course, that's they are. that's and, kind of their and, signature. And now I'm kind of worried, like you are, because uh, for me, right? Like I always talk about how I like the gritty Deadpool from like the '90s better mm. than the slapstick. Like I'm about to blow my head off real quick so I can sneak into this building and <laughs> oh, this dude's grab my arm. Let me just cut it off so I can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like. Uh, and I just really worry that he's about to just become this like mm-hmm. super like comic relief. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm Over not, the top. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's it's not impossible. Yeah. So I am a little worried about that. Um, but uh, in other news, um, 
we got some some homies in the Discord. Shout out to the Discord, man. You guys got to join the Discord. Uh, I'll start posting it more. Um, yeah, that worked actually. <laughs> it really did. <laughs> but y'all gotta y'all gotta join the Discord, man. And and shout out to everybody that was giving suggestions in there. Uh, and I know everybody wants to hear more about some music stuff, right? So right now, give me. Uh, we're gonna do. Where you're gonna give me a, a funny music story and then give me a triumphant <laughs> music story from your from your music career thus far. Ooh, I don't know how many funny music stories I have. I have a s- kind of all right. I'll get. I'll save that one for my triumphant music story. <laughs> um, let me see. Funny. I'm sure the funniest stories that I have is probably with Red Pill, uh, formerly known as Red Pill, Chris Oric of ugly heroes he and i kind of came into the music scene together uh, we did an album called the kick back in 2011 it was fires inspired by inception um and we did like a, we did some like some mini tours like around michigan um and pill is i need to stop calling them that because red pill unfortunately has been the word red pill has been co-opted by like the women's right like the men's rights like, yeah i saw that crazy motherfucker so um, so Chris, he is a hilarious, he's a great, obviously dope, super dope MC. Um, so <laughs> before this person got canceled, he, I, I always thought, and he kind of re- referred to himself as like a rap game, Louis CK. Like that was his whole, cause he's a white guy. That was his whole swagger was like Louis CK, uh, the comedian. Um, and he used to do this thing where he needed to make sure he was like the perfect amount of drunk before he got on stage and rapped. Uh, and there were, t- <laughs> there were definitely times where this nigga got too drunk and like forgot words. <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing. He was such a good performer that he would recognize like when he got too drunk and was so quick on his feet that he would just like tell me to stop and just like basically start telling jokes and just being on some like stand up comic <laughs> shit until he either remembered the words or until he like sobered up some. And he used to do that shit all the time, bro. And it would have me fucking dying, dog. So funny, man. Shout out to Chris Oric. Uh That's hilarious. So and then so I got a sad slash triumphant story. So uh I did a show with Chris at the where were we we were at the Inferndale at the Loving Touch and I oh, went I did a show there before yeah 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 so we did a show with those guys um, and I remember going there and I remember getting a real bad vibe from the sound guy cause he was cause it was this is when it was first like it was brand new they just opened up so they apparently yeah. spent a bunch of money on their on their equipment and the sound guy, because I was having trouble with my well, the love and to see, and like I feel you because it, it's always that battle of of doing a hip hop show or a rap show at a at a venue that's more accustomed to having bands there, right? So so they like don't treat you with the same respect that they treat yeah. a band Hell with. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So Black. They- Matt Black <laughs> That's how white people get, get activated right. on you when they right. see you come in. They break the glass and right. use the N word. That's their emergency in case of emergency. Um so <laughs> Never <laughs> So uh I I was having trouble with my with my equipment and I'll explain why later. Um and I was like trying to get him to work with me and I was you know I'm a, I'm like the night you know and I will be honest it's part of the reason why sound people are short tempered is because usually uh, artists be divas as fuck Word. and because I <laughs> I've seen some of our people be short as fuck with uh, <laughs> with, Boy, with me, sound people me as well Um, and so with all due respect to the artists you know, I, I see that and I'll be trying to be nice to the dude. I'll be trying to be real understanding. Shout out to the old Miami. The, the guys in the old Miami are awesome. They're really, really dope. Uh, but in Loving Touch, this dude wasn't having none of my shit. I just had, I was just like, bro, I just need you to help me make my fucking sound come out of my head. Like, that's all. Like, and he was like, but dude, dude, like, we just got like brand new cores. Like, like we got state of the art. Like, dude, your, 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 your cables suck. Like, 
Like, all right, bro. Like, can you help me? Can you got y'all got some cables? You spent all that goddamn money. Can I borrow some? Dude, you're black and uh, your, right. your cables are. So he was really being an asshole. Your cables are urban. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was being a jerk, man. I hope he's listening to this podcast. <laughs> hey, sound guy from the Loving Touch, circa 2012. Fuck you. <laughs> um, right, motherfucker. Uh, anyways, so I was having, I finally got it to work, kinda. Um, and it was one of those things where, and I'll explain more in a, well, I, I don't explain it now. I have, <laughs> I, this is my old laptop. I've always used PCs. PCs have, and for my engineers, for my, you know, recording people and my music people, my technology people, you'll know that PCs have historically for a long time been really bad with driver issues, a lot of driver issues. So, like, when you plug something up through USB, there's a driver that communicates with the device and make sure that it that they can t- communicate with each other properly. And a lot of the time, since um, Windows is a third party operation, like a lot of different comp- manufacturers make shit to work for Windows, the cert- the the uh, drivers are always communicating. And it's very easy for them to get out of sync. So, anyways, I was having driver issues with my with my MIDI controller. Uh, and also my sound card, my like uh, audio interface to get the sound to fucking come out of my computer. Um, and it was really, it was one of those things where if you close, if I close my laptop, it basically like resets everything. And I was like, all right, cool. So I'm going to fucking, put, yeah, I'm going to put my shit up. I'm going to, we sound check. We got it to work. Um, I'm going to just leave this shit alone. Don't nobody touch this shit. And when it's time for us to perform, we'll come on and it'll be fine. So obviously somebody closed my laptop. And... <clears throat> I spent like five minutes or seven minutes trying to get this shit to work on stage with Chris Oric, who I just described as a master at like, you know, filibustering, stalling, <laughs> telling jokes, and even he couldn't save me. And I was like, Chris, bro, like, we can't do this. Sh- we can't do the show. Like, we have failed. Like, my computer just, it, my computer just fucked me. My computer just fucking, it, it, just it just fucked me bro and, and it was no recovering and i was i was at that point where i was so frustrated that it like even if i could have solved the problem even if it was possible i wasn't thinking straight anymore and nigga, we had, we had to stop we had to we had to not do the show we had to stop and i i won't lie bro i remember went back i was in the car driving home and i straight up like had tears in my eyes bro like i was like it reminded me of the scene if anybody watches this if anybody watched the movie the social network before we realized that mark zuckerberg is a monster I used to love that movie <clears throat> and there was a particular scene where Mark Zuckerberg goes to this bar right when he right when Facebook pops off and he's he's kind of he's confident he goes to talk to his this uh this girl that he used to talk to but she kind of played him because he was being an asshole to her and <clears throat> she, he tried to get on by like saying hey I do Facebook now look at me I'm so famous and then she like played his ass again and he got his feelings hurt and I remember he so he walked back over to his friends and he was like really frustrated and he immediately like some they asked him what was wrong and he was like we need to expand right now and he like there was this, this serious moment where he like all right i'm about to turn this shit up and i'm gonna focus on it full time right it was on the way back from that event where i had that moment i was like bro i need to like stop fucking around bro. Yeah. Like, and i went that's saved for bro. a new a new laptop and and f- I never really had problems like that ever again but it was really like i was like devastated bro i was literally gro- i don't know how much of a grown i was maybe 23 Something like that, mm-hmm. nigga. I flat out like cried on the way back, bro. I was right. like, "This shit, <laughs> this was a defeat." I flat out lost. Right, and, and what I was gonna say is like, bro, in my time as an artist, I've never had that happen to where the show was a no go. So that's that's crazy. It 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 was tough. Now here's yeah. the triumphant story, and this is kind of similar. To, well, let me not spill your beans early, but right. you told me a similar story to this, but um. I was on a show with Doss, Doss the artist. Mm-hmm. Those of us, those of y'all who shout who, out to Doss, yeah, who listened to Sage of the Season. He was the second verse on uh, Uncanny Xmas. Um, so Doss, he and I, that's one of my best friends. We go back to to like high school. He and I started doing rapping. He he learned that he can rap, and I learned that I can make beats together. Like we learned that at the same time, right? So <clears throat> we were doing a show. And you were at the show actually. We talked about this. You were mm-hmm. at the show at. Um, the it was in the new Dodge in Hamtramck. It was a yep. dog ass show. Doc was there. Y'all was there. Um, Cole yeah, Young it was, wasn't it for uh, Metro Palooza or something like it that. Was Metro the Fest. Metro Time song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the super dope show. All yeah. all of my homies were there. 
like I said, Doc Ellingsworth, Clear Soul Forces, mm -hmm. uh, Coleman Young, super dope show. So Doss is a really good performer. He's really high energy, right? And we're we're doing a song, um, and suddenly the power, the fucking song just goes out. And luckily, I had the the presence of mind to know exactly what happened. I had accidentally kicked my the power cord for the audio interface out of the socket while he was performing. So he looked back at me, and since I had the wherewithal to know what was going on, I was just like, "Bro, just go. I got it, nigga. I got this shit, motherfucker." <laughs> So he just started freestyling with no beat. Um, and I and he gave me about a minute or two. I plugged the shit back in. All my driver issues were fixed. So I was able to get it popping immediately, pop the shit back in and press the fucking play button right when he finished the verse. And the next song just immediately stopped, started <laughs> seamlessly, bro. It's like, it literally had it not been for his cursory glance backwards where he just kind of looked like <laughs> nobody would have known, bro. And I just, Hey, and it was, it came together so organically that shit was super fire. So that's my triumphant story related to my sad story. So boom, there we go. Boom. That's fire. Um, <laughs> so let's see my funny story, right? Uh, I have a couple, <laughs> but let's go. Let's see here. I have a few funny ones. I want to think of a good one. Um, so I actually, I'm actually going to do the reverse of what you did. I'm going to tell this triumphant story first. Okay. So, <laughs> so basically the kind of the way that I ended up in the position I'm in now is um, so the job that I had when I was working was I was uh, I was a chef and I hated it right I hated going to work I just couldn't stand the people that I was had to deal with you know and, and it's because when, when you work in an industry like that it's like I just had a lot of people that would just talk to me like I was dumb and I was like definitely smarter than all the people you know what I'm saying than like the, the bosses and everything and um and I just remember this is around the time when Cerebro Apex, Cerebro Apex uh, had came out and it was doing super well and I had like sold out all the CDs in like the first like two weeks you know what I'm saying and it was it was going really well and I was just like you know what man like like I'm done like I'm done working you know what I'm saying I was like I'm gonna I was like so I had like a pretty lofty goal, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stack up these, these royalty payouts and I'm going to, I'm going to stack up the money for my, my, you know, my, my merch and my physical CD selling. And, and I'm, when, I'm going to try to save like, like 8,000 bucks and I'm just going to quit. You know what I'm saying? That was my goal. And then, and then after the project was out for, a, you know, a few weeks, I had this day at work and it was like the worst day ever. Yeah. It was like um it was like employee appreciation day or something, right? And and all the employees had like a little ice cream. Ice cream, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> now you want to raise, but here's some ice cream, hey. pizza. Hey, why don't you put this ice cream in your bank account and see if you can fucking cash a check with it? So um they were doing this and I was like stuck like making all the food for it you know what i'm saying so i didn't get to enjoy anything and then wow y'all had remember, to prepare for y'all own party yeah so then <laughs> like so then, so then <laughs> like <laughs> welcome to your party <laughs> so then uh so then this was, this was a few years ago so then i um had to, like make all these salad things and uh they had like pecans on them right and I was putting the pecans in the sides, whatever, blah, blah. So then this lady, she was like a new boss, too. She was like mad, like disrespectful, like, you know. Oh, she comes in the in the, in the the kitchen or whatever, and she has like all these pecans on this tray. Mm. And she's like, and she, and she just goes, why aren't these pecans toasted? And then, and then she, she looks at me, and I was just like, like, not going to be hey. <laughs> Exactly. Like, uh, one of those things where I was just like, so I know that she's not talking to me right. like that. You know what I mean? And then she's like, hello. Oh, and hell no. Nah. Bro, I stared at her. She came closer to me. And I actually, 100%, this is no lie, bro, I smacked the tray 
<laughs> up in the air and they just went flying everywhere. Oh, and then fantastic. she goes and then she goes, Okay, come on, we need to have a talk. And I just undid my my little apron and <laughs> threw it in there. And I was like, I'm straight, I quit. And yeah, then no I just thanks. quit right on the spot. And um so my goal was to have eight thousand bucks saved up. I had two thousand bucks <laughs> saved up. <laughs> but uh but long story short, man, like I I figured it out and, and here I am, you know, Strong. right now, you know, making a living off of hey, man, music. Man, that's so. not I mean, you're a professional. Right. You're a professional blue check rapper. <laughs> like that's it, to me, I mean this is not exactly the same thing, but it, right. it reminds me of when you know, I spent a long time working on basketball skills, right? Mm-hmm. Training, shooting jump shots. Like, you know, you thought you were going to go to the NBA at one point, then you re- then you saw some you saw an 8th grader do a fucking 360 windmill <laughs> and then it became clear that you're not going to go to the NBA. Fact. <laughs> so, that'll be that's a, I think I told this story before, but I'll tell that one later. Um, Mario Chalmers. No, nah, this was Joe Crawford. Okay. But Mario Chalmers was the next year when that nigga was just a thousand times better than nigga. Bro, how long you been playing here in North Carolina? Uh, I'm six. Right. I'm fucking <laughs> your age. Let's go play Pokemon. Like, as I dunk on a nigga. Like, oh, so y'all are real basketball players, and I'm trash, apparently. Uh, but, you know, so you, you, you work hard. Oh you play. God. You put in work. You, like, you train your body. You sacrifice and I played Division three college, but I played NCAA basketball for four years. And for me, bro, like that's a thing that two percent of people get to do. You know what I'm saying? Like that that made it worth it. Like I, I got to a level that was not professional, but like I got to a level where my work was paid worth off. It, it yeah. paid off. And yeah, and, and I can can not many people can say that. Yeah, and it was a place where the majority of people don't get and they don't experience that. So and so I would I feel like what you've experienced is similar to that, right? Right. Um. So that's super dope, man. Yeah, man. Thank you, bro. And <laughs> the funny story. So, um, years back, right? A few years ago, I'm going on tour, going to Europe with my group, Clear Soul Forces, right? And this had kind of been. During a time where we had uh, did what album? I think it was. I think we had did Fab Five, mm-hmm. and this was uh, around the time Fab Five came out. So we're getting ready to go to Europe, and things had not been the best between us after um, Fab Five came out. So we had kind of not seen each other, and then it was just kind of like. A manager was just at the time was just kind of like, "All right, man, y'all tours all set up. Y'all going to Europe next week." You know what I'm saying? So it was like, "Big part." Okay, cool. So we had to kind of, you know, get everything ready. We were about to go on tour for a month and a half in Europe, right? Okay, bet. Haven't seen these cats in, you know what I mean? Haven't seen these cats in a in a, in a couple months, and we about to go be together for a month and a half. So. I just remember, bro, getting to the airport, and I'm like, okay, I'm probably, probably on the other, probably at the gate, you know. What I'm <laughs> so, <laughs> no. So, you know, everything's going, and uh, I'm like, all right, yeah, cool, man, yeah, yeah. So, all right, uh, and been through the, the security check, <laughs> sitting at the gate for a few minutes. You know, the plane starts. John Travolta, plane me, and <laughs> <Skeletor, like. laughs> plane starts boarding, and I'm like, okay, all right, mm, okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm about to fly to Europe by myself. Dog, what a horrifying feeling, bro. Or well, yes, there's no, but yeah, it was. Yeah, bro, <laughs> I'm about to go to Europe it was, alone. It was so horrifying. So um, get on the plane. And I'm still on the plane for a minute. And I'm like texting our manager at the time and I'm like, bro, I don't see anybody else. Like, what should I do? Should I get off the plane? <laughs> like, should I get off? Should I stay on? Should I get off? And he's like, um, uh, wait a couple more minutes, you know what I'm saying? And then I'm like, dog, this is unbelievable. So then I look around and I see Elijah Day. So I'm like, Okay, bet, Elijah. So I'm like, at the very least, me and him could like 
make it we could make it work you yeah, know what i'm saying yeah, cuz yeah. he's the guy he's the producer he's the guy with the music and everything and mm-hmm. like we can make it work with us too so i'm like okay well if he's here everybody's here right so bruh we get we fly into amsterdam like 16 whatever how many hours later i wake up bro we get to amsterdam <laughs> the other two were not on the plane. <laughs> they missed. They missed the plane, dog. Oh my God. To Europe. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I was like freaking out. They we got it sorted out because uh, Laz is just a genius. Mm. Um, he he told the, the people at the gate that he was a diabetic and he left his medicine. <laughs> <laughs> and then he left his medicine in the car and he was like and he said he said well, just, would you rather me die here than get on the or get on the plane like or get my medicine and they felt really bad for him and they put him on the they put both of them on the next plane so they came uh, in the next day <laughs> that's funny bro holy shit oh god yeah it's pretty hilarious man so that's mine man a triumphant story and a funny one boom boom all right, bro. Let's do it. You can only pick three. New subject. Oh. We're on to something new. Uh, we did the sports thing. We'll probably get back to it. Maybe we'll do, like, positional football. I know you don't. What's really, football? Yeah, I was going to say that. Foot, but. He's talking about <laughs> soccer? <laughs> huh? I'm talking about, I'm talking about, uh, he's talking about football. We don't know about football. I mean, once we go past, well, we can do quarterback, running back, wide receiver. Boom. Uh, 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 uh. Getting too, you get into you getting a little too crazy. Quarterback, running backs, wide receivers. Are there other positions in football? <laughs> <laughs> are there other yeah. things? Yes, there are plenty of other positions oh, in football. Okay. But uh, I don't know. Hey man, let's do it. You can oh, only pick three. what do we, we got, got we here? Got the edge lords. We got the the, uh, the. What would you call that? Like the not the protagonist, but the the, the man. Role. There's a kind of the right rival. Name. There's yeah. a there's a a name for it. I'm sure our the people in our um, Discord are gonna be mad at us for not knowing. But there's like an <laughs> actual title for this. Word up. Um, you know, kind of the rival character, but also the the friend, the companion, mm-hmm. the the uh, the edgy one. You know what I'm saying? That we got some of those on here. Uh, I just typed it into Google. Uh, okay, what Google. do you call a shonen rival? I, I think it's just the shonen rival. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay. We can yeah. only keep three. Yep. Let's do it. The shonen rivals. All right. Boom. Boom. So first off top, Bakugo, uh, who, boy, I tell you what, <laughs> uh, was not a fan of him at first. Me neither. His he proposed his hero name be King Explosion Murder. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Right. All right. I'm about to lose some anime points here because I can't think of this dude's name from um <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he <laughs> fucking hell. Right. He a from motherfucking Yu Yu Hakusho. Um right. I liked him. I he reminded me a lot of Vegeta. Um, yeah, he was cool. He was real like because he he was the type of so there's a few different tropes of like the shonen rival there's like the loud crazy high energy ah, fuck you you know what i'm saying like, let's fight or i hate you kind of <laughs> and then there's like the laid back like super chill reserved version and he was one of the prototypes of that another version another guy who had that laid back miss um the reserved uh nature was killua who is mm-hmm. next from um uh hunter hunter now uh, uh, I think Hunter Hunter is one of that's that's one of your one of your joints. Yeah, I love that um, but the, and I I watched it, but it's it's not one of my favorites. But I did like the fact that this is one of the rare instances of a rivalry where the the rivalry was like legitimate. Like that's still my nigga. Yeah, it shit. was it, it was definitely like more rooted in actual friendship. Like friendship, than yeah, anything else. for sure. Yeah. And you don't see that a lot. You don't, um, especially not with the next two, <laughs> with uh, Sasuke from Naruto, um, who is probably the most famous shonen rival ever. Yeah, uh, I would say. 
Um, and then Vegeta, who's one of my favorite characters of all time. That's obviously my first keeper is Vegeta. Vegeta. Okay. Um, then we got Rower Noah's Rower Noah. Rower Noah. Rower Noah. What? Rower Noah. Rower Noah Zoro. There you go. Uh, from One Piece. It's, t- it's tough. It's, it's a tough tongue twister to for sure. Um, I don't know a lot, a lot about him because I didn't watch One Piece for the past 30, 30 episodes. Uh, but I know that he's that he got a bunch of swords and he has a few in his mouth, which is fucking cool. Uh, I saw I saw one episode where he cuts in half like a giant, like a hundred foot monster. Yes, uh, like a mountain. That was pretty cool. A trillion fold trichalicism, I think. Yeah, happening. fuck yeah, I remember that shit yeah, randomly. Yeah. I remember watching that one episode out of context. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that was my first dog. My first introduction to to uh, to Game of Thrones oh, was good. completely out of context. Season finale of seasons <laughs> of season seven, which Why is like, would you do that? cause I didn't give a fuck. I was I was one of the anti Game of Thrones niggas back then. Oh, I was man. like, oh man, fuck that. I don't care about You're this shit. You're a complete throner now. Oh no, I'm I'm the I'm the the me and Edmund are the are the captains of the ship, bro. <laughs> John, <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> uh, I, bro, I'm telling you, bro. You would like. I I really think you would I like already, that shit, dog. Know, it's it's think, really I fucking just dope. Gotta take time to watch it. Um, all right, and then we got my next keeper, motherfucking too hot, too cold. Um, mother, why can't I think of his name? Todoroki. Todoroki. Todoroku. Todoroki. <laughs> you watch anime? <laughs> yeah, I don't watch none of this shit. I, I'm gonna need help with the next guy too, just to put that out there. But I actually do know a whole lot about. Uh, Todoroki, he is my second keeper. Um, I, man, look, bro. I oh. liked the fact that he he rem- okay. His arc reminds me a lot of Gara, in yes. that he starts off as like a really like, man, this guy is crazy. Like he's super powerful, but he also he's also like an asshole. I don't I like kind of hate him. Um, <laughs> I root against him because he's like positioned as an antagonist. Well, then you get to learn about his backstory. You get to learn about Gara's backstory. Todoroki's backstory, him being the son of the number two hero, him, you know, super abu- abusive relationship. Um, and you kind of, you, you kind of get humble. You kind of like grow fond of his story. Right. And then sure. the fact that he turned out to not be a piece of shit, he's just really serious, but he's also like, Hey man, like respect, nigga, respect. <laughs> Deku. You know what I'm saying? Respect yeah, yeah. Midoriya. For sure. I respect your skills uh, and their fight. At the um, the summer game, what do they call that? The um, the oh the uh, summer the sport athletic the, festival, the sports fest, sports fest. Yeah, that was that's one of my favorite anime fight scenes ever. Um, then we've got the wild man with the boar helmet, <laughs> Inosuke, uh, from Inosuke, from motherfucker, Inosuke from, Inosuke Demon, from Slayer. Demon Slayer. Another guy who I see. The thing I like about him is the aesthetic, bro. Like I love he. Him. He he reminds me of the dude from Bleach, um, the spiky haired red head guy from Bleach. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And not not in, for any other reason than in terms of personality, he's like the kind of eccentric wild man that like counters, um, because in Demon Slayer, um, you've got the main character who is really like this sort of like soft hearted but like intense. Yeah, he's maybe borderline crybaby he, yeah, a little bit. He's pretty intense though. Yeah, but he's but he but it comes from it's very much like Midoriya. It comes from like this kind of soft hearted mm-hmm. like I just want everybody to get along. Right. And you've got Inosuke who is like this kind of wild Complete like psychopath fire energy. That Danny like, Green went zero for nine tonight. Like at what point do we? <laughs> at what point do? We, <laughs> do what, what point do you get your blood revoked? No, right? I can't. Like, you no longer are a bloody cash shooter, like at, clearly at this point, right? Like, why is he? He hasn't made a jump shot since 2016, bro. It's and it's and it's like, it's not a, a slump. It can't be a slump anymore because it's a year. It's like a year. It's been several years, multiple years yeah. since he's been a good shooter. Yeah, he does. He forgot. I, I don't know what the fuck's got to play basketball. Yeah, or maybe he, hey, bro, maybe he was just hot for like four years, <laughs> and this is who he really is. Like maybe that's what it is, because he been he been stealing people's money recently. Like his last two contracts, he has not earned. Hey, okay, man, rep reputation three and D guy, and it's not enough. 
and I like this this last this last uh, pick of um, of Eli. I mean, um, <laughs> Levi. <laughs> Levi. <laughs> got every day, bro. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Levi. He's he's not really he's not like positioned as the typical and like rival character, right? Yeah. Like he's. And that I think I I would say that in Attack on Titan, Mikasa would probably be the closest person to yeah. that to that role. Um, but Levi, I mean, obviously this motherfucker is a buzzsaw. Um, you know, on some on some like I can take down a he. It, it's almost like if if Eli if wow if they, <laughs> if they just if they I don't know how to do this shit no more fucking. It's late, bro. It's eleven thirty. I don't know what you want me to do. Eleven thirty at night. I'm fucking tired. If you just let Levi do his thing, it's it almost feels like the Titans aren't a threat, right? Like if it, right. if it was like three more of them, it would be like, oh, like sure, it's not even a big deal. Um. So with that in mind, let let me go ahead and pick my top three. Um. I already got Vegeta. Obviously, that that goes without saying. Um. Talked about him enough. I'm gonna go with already. I actually I picked Todoroki already at uh, my number two, and I think I'm gonna go Eli. Just kidding, Levi <laughs> um, for my third pick. Ooh, I like it because uh, I mean Sasuke is right there. Um, Bakugo because he does grow on me eventually, um, but I just like I like the I like the competent bro. Like too often you'll find anime characters that are like got a bunch of potential but like fell short because the plot needs it like nah Levi is a fucking ass kicker and there's no if ands or buts about it and I'm here for that so gonna go with Vegeta Todoroki and Levi from motherfucking Attack on Titan boom boom I like it alright let's go man kind of the edgy well, Ackerman just to make sure y'all Levi Ackerman thought I was yes. I actually do watch anime. His name is Levi Ackerman. <laughs> all right. So, first of all, who's the? Can't really see it. Oh, sorry. Um, I mean, I don't know how to make it bigger. Don't man. don't worry about it. I'm gonna pull it over. It's literally on so the biggest screen. The first there. one we got here <clears throat> is Bakugo, and like you said, bro, this is a character who uh i couldn't stand until that episode where he kind of comes clean on why he feels the way he feels about deku and all might and everything you know what i'm saying so uh it's he's not one of my favorites but you know i he i kind of came around to him a little bit after that yeah uh then we got he a from yu yu haka show dope character um uh kind of the 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 more of the edge edge lord like chilled chilled out one for sure um the dark kind of reminds me of Sa- Sa- well i should say sasuke reminds me of him mm-hmm. um but yeah uh, i thought he was a really dope character was a dragon of the darkness flame yeah uh, but yeah that was dope uh so i like he killua that's my that's that's my guy right there uh i love hunter hunter killua awesome character and like you said man uh i am i love the 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 rivalry that is rooted more in friendship than than anything else Mm -hmm. and you kind of you get that in one piece too Uh, so i will say hunter hunter and one piece are like some of the only examples of that you know what Mm -hmm. i'm saying the next we got my guy and we got my first keeper and that's sasuke wushia Look, man, we we had that one episode a long time ago where we were talking about Sasuke and Nor and uh, Naruto's like narratives and their stories, yeah, yeah. and like Sasuke had a, a a big time heel turn where he was just like an unhinged right, no. maniac, bro. You know what Sasuke, saying? what the fuck are you doing, bro? <laughs> but at the same time, uh, I I get it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, him. Uh, I get it, right? And and I I understood his his story and and where he was coming from, and um and he really and even in the end, you know, even in the very end of the original, uh, before we get to Baruto, he really just felt like he 
deserved to rebuild the village in in his vision after what was done to his family and his brother you know what i'm saying so uh i get it but also man sasuke is just dope character man like abilities the renegon uh just he he's got if you go back and watch naruto he's at the forefront of some of the best fights in the show um definitely one of my favorite anime characters period i love sasuke so sasuke is my first keeper then we got the Prince of All Saiyans. <laughs> we got Prince Vegeta. Uh, I couldn't stand Vegeta until like bo- the end of the Boo Saga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He yeah. uh, always got on my nerves, but now I love him. And, and of course, the the greatest written Dragon Ball character, no question. Mm-hmm. Um, the best developed Dragon Ball character, no question, and probably the best Dragon Ball character, yeah. period. Uh, so shout out to Vegeta. Then we got Ro Ro Zoro, and this is a character that I'm actually a huge fan of. And while I'm not a huge fan of One Piece, I have seen like hundreds of episodes of it, and I literally watched it strictly because of Zoro. Mm. Um, I saw Zoro like I was like, yo. Whoever this dude is with these swords in his mouth, he looks, he looks sweet, so I want to watch it. So I did watch it, and I, I've seen a few episodes, and I am a big fan of, of Zoro and his character. So I do love Zoro. Um, number three, or number three. <laughs> then we got Todoroki from uh, My Hero. Uh, another dope character. I like him. I like his story. Uh, he's kind of the... He's like the laid back, edgy one, uh, kind of more of the like Sasuke type character than Bakugo is. Then we got Inosuke from Demon Slayer. I love him, bro. Like yeah. the just the another like super intense, crazy person. You the know wild man. Yeah, I love the wild man. Uh, and then we got Levi, man. Just a uh, man. Just a uh, this dude is awesome. He's he's the I think he's the best character in the show. Um, I have not seen any of the new season, but I am like caught up on. I did uh, see the third season, so I'm I'm still on the second, the end of the second season, yeah. so I'm I'm behind. I'm well, gonna fucking do that shit like this week. I think. Yeah, so I need to watch the new season. But I love Levi, man. He's an awesome character. So let's go. My first keeper is Sasuke. My second keeper is going to be uh, this is this is a lot harder. Holy, hold on, this is harder than I thought it was gonna be. All right, my first keeper is going to be Sasuke. My second keeper is going to be Killua, man, from Hunter. I am. Uh, I love Hunter, so I'm going to go Sasuke, Killua. And then my third, uh, my third keeper, I'm going to go with, I, okay, I love in in Sasuke, but I, I, I got to see, I got to see more, if mm-hmm. that makes any sense, right? Mm-hmm. I've only seen little bit of his character so I'm gonna go with Inosuke from Demon Slayer <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna be my three keepers man like it, this is a tough one but give me Sasuke Killua and Inosuke shout out to Zoro though big shout out to Zoro and also big shout out to Levi because I am a big Levi fan yeah I was surprised to not see you go Zoro there yeah I love Zoro man but I mm, I'm a bit, just a more of a bigger uh, Demon Slayer fan so I'm gonna oh. go with Sasuke Killua and Inosuke boom let's go alright All right, man let's go let's talk about some music let's talk hey. about some raps let's talk about some hip hop uh, shout out to the homie in the discord I think he goes by the name of a Water Druids, and he wanted us to talk about some 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 music here. Boom. So let's go top five favorite hip hop albums mm. ever. And the reason we got to be specific is because if you're talking about top five albums, that's that yeah, requires that days of research yeah. and soul searching. And to be honest, bro, this is, might sound like a super hipster take, but I don't know if. If I would have a hip hop album in my top five, where a, I would have maybe one or two for sure. I think I would have. I don't know, man. You got Daft Punk. You got Bob Marley. You got, you know, people like. Would you consider Erica Badu? Is she hip hop? Because I because Baduism is one of my favorite mm-hmm. records of all time. You got some of the oldies. Fire. You got my Miguel Jackson. That's Michael Jackson. 
uh, all kind of stuff. So, anyways, I'm glad we didn't do that. But I do have a top five for rap albums, for hip hop albums. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is a real backpacking hipster, fucking peace, peace king, uh, <laughs> sun prince. Open my third eye list right here. Actually, no, it's not. Nah, yeah, it is. I don't know. Whatever. It's my list. Fuck you guys. So, number five. We're going to go with Kendrick Lamar to Pimp a Butterfly. Mm. Love, love, love that album. One of the greatest. I think that's one of the best produced records in terms of beat selection. Man, a lot of Kamasi Washington on there. Some Flying Lotus in the beginning. Um, Just every beat on there is fire, in my opinion. I think that's his best record. I think I, I like it better than... Good Kid, Mad City. I also like it better than Damn. Um, so yeah, to Pimp a Butterfly, Kendrick Lamar. Now, number four. This is uh, a no Detroit uh, musicians list is complete, especially in the hip hop field without a Marshall Mathers sighting. I'm gonna go with the Marshall Mathers EP uh, at number four. Um, I mean, I think that most people agree that that's his his best record. He kind of broke through with that, um, with some classics. You got the uh, yeah, that that album is is really really dope. Yeah, yeah, Criminal Stand. Uh, <laughs> was Renegade on that one? Yeah, no, Renegade was, is on Jay Z's album. I don't think it was on Mars. Uh, oh, this okay. this project had uh, when I was just a little baby boy. Mm-hmm. My mama used to tell me these crazy yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She used to tell me, "Yep, that was on there." Um, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that song is fire though. Yeah, that was on there. Uh, I'm just Marshall Man. Yeah, dog. That song was on there. Man, that's Stan was, was on there. Stan is is a great. The fucking song. Ken Kniff skits. <laughs> Ken Kniff <laughs> from Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, bro, the Ken Kniff skits. Um, yeah, so that album, Marshall Mathers LP, is definitely fire. One of my favorite albums as well. For sure. Then um, what else? I feel like, uh, oh. Uh, um, that's why they call me Slim Shade. Oh, yeah. That song's fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that song. Uh, who knew? I never knew I mm-hmm. knew I would get this big, and I never knew I. Yeah, there's a lot of dang. That album is fire. So, <clears throat> moving on to number three. Um, <sighs> love hate relationship with this person. No, I'm not gonna say that. It's not. It's not like Kanye. I flat out love Lupe Fiasco, but I just right. think that his current... I mean, he's just an asshole, and I think yeah, he, he'd be the first to admit it. Mm-hmm. Like, he knows he's a jerk. And so, and it makes me want to be like, man, do I really have... To? Like, I'll be listening... I, I feel listen, you, I feel you. Right. Do I really want to... Because I listen to his podcast every now and then, and I'll be like, man, Lupe, like, come on, dog. Like, I know you know better than that. <laughs> I know you're smart, and I know you know better than that. you just trying to... St- argue a little bit and I don't always have time for that but anyways Food and Liquor is my third favorite rap, rap album of all time um, I thought the int- I mean just every I used to listen to that shit like start to finish all the time my favorite joint on there is Pressure I think that beat is fire yeah. and it had I remember did you remember when that album came out there was a leaked version that mm-hmm. was incomplete and it didn't have the Jay Z verse on yeah. it. I remember that shit. I remember he actually liked Lupe's verse better on the unreleased version. I remember that than the Jay Z version, uh, but it was still cool. And now we're gonna get real Detroit. Um, my numbers two and one are related insofar as they are all Dilla related. Boom. Number two. Number oh. two. So here's I might surprise you here. Number two, I'm gonna go with Fantastic Volume Two. Let's go. Uh, I mean, when I first that was the record where I because I had I had discovered Timberland was the first producer that I was like where I recognized like oh the music sounds different when he does it. That's that's cool. Then it was uh, Samurai Champloo and Nujabes where I was like oh like that's the kind of music that I like. Back to the rhythm. Fourth and back, like that. That kind of music sounds good, and you know, I, mm-hmm. you know, I told you the story off air yesterday where I was listening to my sister's records with the Fugees and, um, you know, uh, De La Soul and this kind of like soulful hip hop, right? And I'm like, all right, this is the kind of shit that I, I like the way that sounds. But it wasn't until Fantastic Volume Two that I discovered in college, where I was like, oh, 
this is how niggas from Detroit do that shit. Right. And hey, it sounds hey, way hey, better hey, than the rest hey, of this shit. What you say? Get this. Money. Money. You know that song was randomly on uh Payday, Payday, Payday. I think that that song was randomly featured on the on the movie Office Space. That's awesome. Man. I think I think it is there's a bar scene where they're playing <laughs> that song. <laughs> or awesome. no, I think it's Climax. Uh, or is he the climax? Or... Hard to get. I know you. Oh, I know you like. Oh, man, fucking dope song, bro. Jay Dilla, um, obviously legendary, amazing producer. I think he is the most underrated producer rapper of all time. Mm-hmm. He, he had was, bars. He was flat out the best rapper in song. Yeah, he was. Flat he out he flat out could spit. Yeah, he yeah, had, he had, he Jay Jay Dilla, great rapper as well. Absolutely. Um, and so here's where I'm gonna where I might confuse y'all a little bit. I just talked a lot of shit about Detroit, and I also yesterday off air talked shit about this person. Uh oh. But I still think my number one favorite record of all time is "Like Water for Chocolate." Hey. Common sense. But and I like common I common sense on the Dave Chappelle show. Right, bro. <laughs> I I I used to love common. That song's on there, right? Fool. I no, no, no. no. That's, what album is that on? That's off of uh, B. It's either B or, B or Finding Forever. It's on B. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Um. So, Ooh, baby. Oh yeah, right. Dilla was Dilla, man. This so, is... so check it. I like. I used to love Common. As I got older, I kind of felt like he was a little corny, so I didn't like his rhymes as much. But, yeah. uh, I like that record because of how Dilla made it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like that. The entire record was completely produced by Dilla. And it's like, bro, it's just from start to finish, it's a work of art, bro. Like, I, I haven't really heard anything like it. I think it's by far and away his. I, a lot of people like B. I think B is close, but I think well, like Water for Chocolate is just, it's just undeniably his best record. And in, in terms of production, in terms of like what Dilla was able to pull out of Common, like um, B is the only record that comes close to that. I think. I even liked Electric, Electric Circus a little bit. A lot of people hated on that shit. I used to think that shit was fire because the beats were. Weird, but I like weird beats. It's, <laughs> it's hero. So yeah, that's my top five. To Bimpa Butterfly, Kendrick Lamar, uh Marshall Mathers EP by Marshall Mathers slash Eminem, uh, Lupe Fiasco, Food and Liquor, Fantastic Volume Two, Slum Village, Black Water for Chocolate by Jay Dilla, motherfucker. <laughs> Featuring Common. Oh God damn it. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Sir. All due respect to Common. Common's dope. He is. But he would even he would no he he even he would admit that that Dilla put that record together. I mean that was word of it okay. wouldn't have been the same without him. I hear you. Um, all right, man, let's go. This is actually probably the hardest top five I've ever had to do on this podcast. Uh, obviously, I'm an artist. I'm a die hard to the core uh, hip hop fan. So this is very hard for me because I have to like find the line between like things that inspired me but also things that I just loved and listened to a lot and all, all right. the time and that are my favorites so um with that said let's go Boom. all right man coming in I gotta get some honorable mentions off this off my chest first yeah. uh first of all shout out to Illmatic I love Illmatic it's one of my favorite albums of all time I think it's one of the greatest rap albums ever uh, it's not gonna be in my top five, but I love it. It's it's a classic. Um, another one I gotta give a shout out to. Ah, ah this sucks. Dang Yee. it! Why are we doing this? Hey man, it's y'all's idea. Ah, dang it! Uh, I gotta give I gotta give another big honorable mention. Shout out to Fantastic Volume Two. I want to put it on here so bad, but I can't. What? I want to put it on here so oh, bad. Fantastic shit. Volume Two. Big shout out to Fantastic Volume Two, love it, especially uh, Detroit man. Shout out to Slum Village, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, my ah dog, <laughs> this sucks. No, oh my goodness, uh, I gotta. Uh, are we really doing this? Okay. Yes. Uh, I gotta give another. This. this uh, Come on, man. All right, man. I had to give another big honorable mention to food and liquor. Oh! <laughs> I got to give a big honorable mention. Wow. To food and love it. Love it. Love it. Classic. One of my favorite albums of all time. Doesn't quite 
make my top five, but I do love it. It is a classic. Probably uh, the time at the time that Food and Liquor came. I have to talk about it because it it's, it would probably be my number six. But at the time that Food and Liquor came out, that was the first time I ever felt like uh, they. There was a rap album that was made for somebody like me. It, bro. I had the same exact feeling. Yeah, I think a lot. Yeah. I think that was a dog whistle. I talked about this, bro. Yeah. Guess who's on third? Lupe still like Lupe in the third. Yeah, when bro. he said that, n- nerd niggas said, "Huh?" Yeah, for sure. Fact. What was that? Uh, Did I actually, hear that correctly? You know what? I gotta put it in my top five, bro, because it, it's just it's too instrumental, it's too, bro. I agree. So I'm gonna actually. Swap out my uh, other one So I gotta go Food and Liquor I have to I have to do it At number five uh, Because like I said When that album came out That was definitely um, The first time ever That I felt like An album was made For someone like me Uh, The song Um Kick Push is my favorite song. That song's amazing, amazing feeling. I was and I was skating at the time as well, like mm. crazy, right? But um, he say, she say, man, like mm-hmm. I really felt that song, and that was the first time where I felt like I could relate to a rap song. You know what I mean? Because and and it was a res- weird, different feeling. So, bro, Daydream is about a Gundam, Bruh I don't care what you say. Listen to the fucking lyrics. Nah, he flat out I says agree, it. I agree. And and um, he compares a project building to a <laughs> fucking Gundam. The 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 project is amazing. The writing is amazing. Definitely, like I said, this is the first album ever that I heard that I felt like it was made for someone like me. So shout out to Food and Liquor, man. Oh, man, classic. Uh, so with that said, the the uh, the other honorable mention I got to give an honorable mention to Mad Villainy, mm-hmm. Doom, and uh, um, Mad, Mad Lib. Lib, Fire, Fire, Doom album. Yep. I know it's a lot of people's favorite, man, but it's my it's my number two favorite Doom album. So uh, I, I'll admit that I'm a fake fan, and that's my favorite. One. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to Mad Villainy. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Mad Villainy. My number five is gonna be Food and Liquor. Coming in at number four, I'm going with. The old school. I'm going with the Roots, Illadelph Half Life. This is my favorite Roots album. I got a sweet story about this album. I had talked about this album before, like a lot back in the day. And my group did a show in Germany, and I had a fan give me this album on vinyl, and I have it still. Uh, a fan gave me this album on vinyl because they knew I liked it, which is amazing. But yeah, bro, if you want to hear like Prime top tier rhyming black thought over like gritty rap beats this was so what the roots always did was they rapped over like the he always rapped over like the live instrumentation stuff illadelf half-life is the only hardcore roots rap album and what they did was they like sampled themselves and made like rap beats and they didn't play the live stuff so this is in my opinion this is the best black thought in existence on this project so I love Philadelphia Half Life. It's it's a really dope project. So that's my number four. Oh, Foreign Exchange for me. That's another mm. uh, honorable mention. Mm-hmm. Sorry. What's okay. that? Uh, Nicolay and uh, and, um, and Fonte. Fonte. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Tickle low. Uh, tickle low. Tickle low. Tickle low. Tickle low. Tickle low. Uh, coming in at number three, Doug. I gotta go. Slim Shady LP. Uh, getting him in the one here, but I gotta go Slim Shady LP. Nice. I'm cancerous. So when I did, she wouldn't want to answer this. If you responded back with a battle rap, you wrote for cannabis. Shout out to Eminem. Uh, this album, amazing, changed my life. This is the first rap album that I ever bought with my own money. This was what, um, 99? Yep. So this is the first rap album I ever bought with my own money. Another, another cool story when I was in France with my group, we had did the Clear Soul Forces hoodies. And the hoodie sold out instantly. I had one on, and we did a uh, we did a, a interview with a guy at, at a radio show, and he had this on the wall, the vinyl. And I was like, "Yo, let me buy that, man. I'll buy that off you right now." Like, I love that album. That's and fire. he was like, "He's like, no, man, I can't sell." He's like, "But I I didn't get to order a hoodie," and I was like, "Took I took the hoodie <laughs> off. I gave him my hoodie." And he gave me the the vinyl, man, and That's I still cool. have that. So I got like two awesome vinyls that were like gifts acquired from from fans. So that's that's crazy. So that's my number three, man. That's my favorite Eminem album. Uh, I do love Marshall Mathers LP, but I, that's my number three. Coming in at number two, let's go, man. Blue and Exile, Below the Heavens. Ooh. 
Fire. I love this album. Blue's one of my favorite rappers ever of all time. We got the. <laughs> uh, huh? What? Can't spill, what the, can't spill the beans. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, Blue, Blue's one of my favorite rappers ever. Below the Heavens, man, I think this is one of the best rap albums of all time. Uh, just man, the beats, the rhymes, the subject matter. It's it's a it's perfect. It's one yeah. of the most perfect projects ever made. I love it, and I. When this project came out, like I listened to it like nonstop for like three years straight. Mm. Um, so shout out to Blue and Exile, man. They're both super cool cats. I've met them both many times. Uh, just kicked it with them out in uh, Europe a couple times and met them at a festival, I think, in Ohio. I think that was the first time we met them, but they're both super cool, man. And Blue's one of my favorite rappers. So shout out to Blue and Exile. My number one. My number one favorite rap album of all time. Got to go with Mmm Food by MF Doom. That is my favorite album. And the reason why I love this album so much, obviously the rhymes and everything. I told you yesterday when we talked off air, I used to do this thing when I was younger and I would, mm. uh, I refed like kid games. I read when I was in high school, I refereed uh, like little elementary school games. Uh, and then I would get 50 bucks every weekend I did it. And I would always go, I told you the way I spent the 50 every time, no responsibilities, right? So nah, I would rich, go to, money. I would go, the first thing I would do is I would go to the toy store at the mall. <laughs> this is, I was in high school, right? So you already know, I was uh, still about the toys, man. Right. And I would go, and what I was doing was I was like super into the little Star Wars figures. So I would mm -hmm. go to the mall and I would buy one Star Wars figure and they were, they were like six bucks right so I would buy a Star Wars figure they're like twenty dollars dog now. right I would buy a Star Wars figure and then the other thing I would do is I would go to Best Buy and I would always buy two CDs and uh, and I would and I used to have I told you I had a crazy CD collection until somebody broke my truck and stole it when I was like 20 something right. um, but yeah man jerk but uh, loser idiot <laughs> Bitch, hater. <laughs> hater. <Not even> fucking... <laughs> <laughs> but I would but so the first thing I did was like, all right, I need to get every Nas album. So the first thing I did was get every Nas album. Then I was like, all right, I need to get every Jay Z album. So then I got every G Jay Z album. Then after that I started doing this thing where I was buying albums strictly off of what the cover looked like. Right. So I would so I like stumbled into dilated peoples like this right like they had the album expansion team I thought it looked dope had a sweet name they had the cool little logo with the eye and the little stick body yeah so I was like bet boom got into dilated peoples I love evidence now evidence is like one of my favorite rappers ever right then I was uh in doing this I ended up uh Get it into like old Outcast stuff because their mm -hmm. album covers are sweet, right? Always and and, and, and uh, AT Aliens, uh, and then I would always see uh, the Doom album. I would always see um, mm Food, and I was like, "Dog, what is this album with this this face with this like dude right. sitting at this table wearing this Doctor Doom mask?" You know what right. I'm saying? And I was like, "I'm gonna get it," but I would never get it. And I finally got it, and then I listened to it, and it was sweet. But but the thing that got me was like it had this little like like DVD thing and it was like uh, him like on the road doing shows and I thought it was like the coolest thing ever yeah. and then but the album itself bro it's like it's like a snack mm. you know what I'm saying like it's it's it kind of like if you guys listen to my music and you and you hear when I like to do the thing where there's like beats playing in between mm. you know what I'm saying like I got that from this album you know mm. what I'm saying like mm. this album is it, it's a it, like I said, it's like a snack, bro. It's like it's like an album, but there's like just weird skits and like just beats that that are track numbers, but there's no rapper on them. And then yeah. he like raps on some. Like it's just like a it's just like a just a weird put together project, and yeah, it was yeah. like nothing I've ever heard, and I love it, man. And then so and and then this is my favorite rap album, bro. So and it, and it really just like that that structure. Like I love. I love like the random structure of that project, and mm -hmm. and and I and it, I still listen to it all the time today. So that's my favorite rap album, uh, mm, Food. So that's my top five, bro. My number five, Food and Liquor. My number four, Illidelph Half Life. Number three, Slim Shady LP. Number two, Below the Heavens. And my number one, mm, 
Food by MF Doom, Recipes of Doom, man. Let's go. Let's go. My favorite song on that album is probably uh, Cun Carney. That song is fire. That is, Darker uh, than the East River, larger than the Empire State, where the beast who guard the barbed wire gate is on the job, not my fate. Come on, man. Doom's the man. <laughs> All right, bro. That's it, man. Episode 65. We talked about some music. Got some funny stories. Got back to some anime. You can only pick threes. It's a good episode, man. Strong, solid. Strong. All back right, on man. deck. We back. We'll see y'all next time. Boy, the Discord, man. Follow us on Instagram at the Swordcast Pie. It's not Christmas anymore. It's not the holidays, but it's still cold outside. You can still listen to me and Hero's new EP, Sage of the Season. It's on all streaming platforms. You can go to Bandcamp if you want. You can download it there. Listen to it, man. It's Let's dope. go. Peace. Hey, yo, yo. Shout out to those Check it. Welcome back, Hero. My word is my sword, Hokage and Batosai Pulling the blades out of the forge, yo Prior to my knowledge of the force Was thinking Jedi, but through obtaining holocrons From both sides, I'm under great skies Everything that glitter ain't kyber crystal My mind will lift you, in this time we shine Together, disarm your pistol, yo Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast My word play, my sword play When blades clash, welcome to the Sword cast, sword cast My word play, my sword play When blades clash, welcome to the Sword cast, sword Cast. My word play, my sword play when blades clash. Uh. Welcome to the sword cast, sword cast. My word play, my sword play when blades clash. Uh.